Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. Last night I was surfing around the web and uh, I came across a video on YouTube from someone that I'm subscribed to. His name is Chandler Dickinson. And he is uh, a smith that is starting to really find his way in the craft. And he has a really good channel on YouTube and I enjoy watching him. Last night he was making a, a bending fork or a scrolling fork. And it was a video that I had actually thought about doing myself because it's a fairly simple project. And, uh, you know, it took him about an hour to pull off, and um, he tried something that he had never done before, which is really cool. And I really admire somebody filming something like that and putting it on YouTube, because there's an old quote that says, you're never going to get more than what you've got if you're only going to do what you've already been doing. You know, it basically, go out and try something new. So, last night I kind of gave myself a challenge. Since I wanted to make a bending fork, um, and I wanted to film that. I didn't want to do the same exact thing that Chandler did. And there are a lot of other smiths out here that have done bending forks as well. So I set myself a very, um, well, interesting set of criteria to make a bending fork. Uh, I decided I don't want to do a handheld one. Um, I want to make a bending fork. Uh, some people have seen them where they fit right in the hardy hole. And uh, they make them that way, too. You don't have to just have them uh, a handheld tool. You can put it in the hardy hole and actually manipulate the stock with your tongs. And I really like that, but I wanted one that was adjustable. So I couldn't weld anything. And that was one of the criteria. If I'm going to make something today, I'm not going to weld it. I need to make it as simple as possible. I need to make it so it's versatile, where it's going to do more than one task. And I wanted to make it where it was affordable, so it would cost less than 10 bucks to make. And I also wanted to have it where it's a reasonable amount of time to make. I didn't want to have it take hours, so I limited myself to 30 minutes. And I thought about it and thought about it. And finally, I came up with something that's so damn simple, um, it, it's almost ridiculous. So here is my bending jig. And I know this may look really, really weird, but um, trust me when I say that it actually works. And I was able to make it more versatile than just a regular bending fork. And all this is... Uh, I've got a 5 16 bolt, and the 5 16 bolt needs to be a little bit longer than the jaws of your vise, and I'll show you why that's important in just a second. Um, you really don't need to have this nut. This nut is just to kind of hold all the pieces on them so they don't get lost. I've got two half inch uh, pieces of uh, round stock here. And I also have a piece of half inch square stock. The most critical thing about building this jig, the only thing that's really required is that you need to get your cross holes drilled straight. So you do need somebody with a drill press that can drill a relatively straight hole for you. That is the most difficult part of this build. So let me show you how the bending forks work. Like many other scrolling and bending jigs, this is going to take place in the vise. Now I have my two round pins the half inch stock, 5 16 hole, 5 16 bolt. All you do is you slide these through and because your material thickness is uniform, you're using the same um, same rod for both pieces, what you could do is just set the width that you want your bending fork to be and simply secure it in the vise. And you can make this just about as wide as your vise jaws. So let me show you what the square pin is for. The One pin. of the things I wanted this jig to be able to do was make S-hooks. And the reason for this is, as a beginning smith, when I go out to craft fairs and different events, S-hooks are one of my best sellers. In fact, there have been some events where they have paid for the cost of admission as well as the travel and everything else that I made was profit. So these S-hooks, um, if you're planning on going out and, and actually vending at places, these are really, really great to have. But for each size, you have to make one of these jigs. You can see how this bends around the jig. It uses a pin to stabilize uh, the end that you've um, fantailed, and then you just wrap around the larger piece of pipe. But every single size S hook you make that has a different opening is going to need a different size pipe. And I wanted to try to figure out a way where the jig that I'm creating for the vise will make these. And that's where that square pin comes into play. So how do we turn this jig into this jig 
with just a square peg. Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but I'm hoping that you may have this already in your shop. What I'm going to do, if you look at the diameter of this pipe, I have a socket here that's almost the same exact diameter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out of the vise, slip the round off, slip the square on, and before I put it back in, I'm just going to take my socket, because it's a half inch drive socket, and it'll fit like so. And because it's a half inch square and half inch round, there's your bending jig. You just space these out as you need to, tighten it down so it doesn't move, and there you go. You're going to have a little bit of play in the socket, but, you know, who cares? You got your bending jig. Now, I want to make the next size up, the bigger one. Well, I picked this socket up at a tag sale, half inch drive. It's just about the same exact diameter as the pipe that I used. So I'll just loosen this up a bit, slide that off, slide this one on. Grab my S hook here, space these out, tighten it down, and there you go. I've got my jig for bending bigger S hooks, all with the same bolt, just by adding a square pin and using one of the round pegs. Pretty easy. Now these guys you see running off into the distance here, these are my uh, dies for my compact bender. Simple little thing picked up at Harbor Freight. In fact, um, there are a lot of people who are into metal crafting and metal work that look at compact benders because they're really nice and easy to use. But um, I use these dies in a, a hydraulic press and I'm also going to be using them here. Now, the inside diameter of these, I haven't measured it. I think it might be three quarter. Not sure. It's, a little, it's definitely bigger than half. So I think this is three quarters of an inch. Um, it will not fit over this pin where it's going to provide any kind of real stability. There's a lot of wobble in here. The trick is, if I make a pin that fits this, I also have to replace this one because the jaws of the vise need to close evenly to lock the jig into place. But I don't want to make this pin much bigger because I want to be able to wrap my fantails around here so I can do my scrolls. I don't want something really massive on this side. So again, that's where the square pin comes into play. If you take your square and you go from side to side, you've got your half inch pin. If you turn it on a diamond and you go from corner to corner, it's definitely bigger than half inch. Again, I haven't measured it, but I just know that for a fact. Um, I rounded off the corner slightly so it will fit into the bigger hole of the compact bender dies. And it's, it's pretty snug. It's not going to flop around. But because this dimension is still half inch, my half inch pin, the jaws of the vise will close evenly. So let me pull this out, slide on my square, I'll slide on my die, lock down the vise, and there you go. The reason I like this option is because I can go all the way up to a three inch die and get much bigger uh, S-hooks than I was making before. And this is, um, I think this is even smaller than the smallest one I've made. So I'm getting some pretty good uh, amount of versatility out of this. Let's loosen up the vise. Drop on the three inch guy, space these out a bit. And I'll admit, you know, sometimes this is a little bit cumbersome to set up and get space just right, but setup is half the fun. Uh, <laughs> Once you have something that's set up like this, it becomes repeatable. And I wanted to try to create something that would be beneficial for any smith out there, really, just giving some more options. So I have over here, I have two, four, six, seven. So I have seven different sizes now I can make S-hooks out of, and I don't need to make seven different types of jigs that involve welding and all sorts of other crazy things. So I wanted to throw this out there and see what you guys thought and hopefully some of you find it useful. 
Well, there you have it, YouTube. A project that took about a half an hour to put together, used about $3.90 worth of materials, and now I have my, not only my adjustable bending fork, but I also have a way to make seven different size S-hooks, which, um, which I'm pretty excited about because, like I said, they're very good sellers. At the end of the day, just stick a nut on the end of your bolts and any of your pieces get lost, drop it in your toolbox, go inside, relax, kick back, watch a little TV, spend some time with the missus, whatever. Uh, before I end the video, I want to thank everybody for stopping by and spending their time with me. Um, I know there are plenty of other channels out there on YouTube, and uh, there's a lot of things to see. And for you to put your investment of time into something that I want to share really does mean a lot. Uh, thank you for all of the new subscribers that have joined the channel, and I want to thank you all for your comments and your suggestions. Please keep them coming. Until the next video, this has been Jeff at Darkwood Metals. I'll see you again soon.